Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana with Pragmatic Works, and here I'm going to be bringing you a video around Power Automate. Specifically with Power Automate, we know when you're creating these flows and you, take, you can take advantage of dynamic content, which is always great and fantastic. And that dynamic content is basically going to be brought out of what's known as the body property from usually a trigger and or an action, right? Everything happens kind of in a flow going downstream when, it talk, when we talk about a flow inside of Power Automate. But occasionally, sometimes the options that are output uh, isn't what you expect. And that's what we're going to be looking at today is what does that body property really mean? What's the format of it? Um, ways that you can see, hey, you know what, that's what I'm actually looking for and how we can make that process significantly easier, right? What we're going to be talking about are JSON arrays. We don't need to be experts in this. And Power Automate made it very simple and easy on how we can accomplish this. So what we can do here is we're going to break this down into a couple of pieces. Let's look at the Power Automate that I have currently going on. We'll take a quick brief look at the source system in play and identify the problem that's actually occurring here. So right over here, we can see I am in PowerAutomate.com. I'm inside of this uh, flow here that I've just called parsing information out of JSON. Now, I've already created it. If we look, it is basically monitoring a Dataverse table when a new item is created. And the idea is this is eventually meant to be a power automate. This is meant to be a flow that will eventually go into an approval process. So to start this whole thing out, right, we're saying, hey, look at this table. When a new record is created, I want to do a condition. And you can see I took advantage of the dynamic content. There's tons of stuff in here. Specifically, I took advantage of a, a dynamic content here that calls requires approval. OK, and we really only have two values that can be returned here. Yes and no. Now you can see if it says requires approval, the value comes back as yes, then I want to eventually go down this left path and I'll start creating an approval process and all that fun stuff. But if we go and we look and I can tell you this is already executed once we can see there's an execution here. When we look at the execution, I did make sure that it said approval process. Yes, but we can see that it's returning false. So even though I know I submitted a new record, the approval uh, status uh, appro uh, requires approval value was set to yes. It's coming back false. And if we take a closer look at what's going on, right, the inputs, as I mentioned, the outputs always give you something what's called a body. And this is in a format known as JSON. It is a, known as a, an array. And if we look at the raw outputs, there's a lot going on here. And this is what makes Power Automate awesome. It usually goes through and figures this out all for us. And it creates that dynamic content for you. And if we really kind of dive in real quick to look at this, right, we can see right here in the item that was sent, we did get a requires approval label of yes. But it still resulted in a false within that condition. So what actually occurred here? Well, the trick is what's going on is it's actually bringing back this numeric value. So I guess one solution would be is, you know what, I can say if this requires approval is equal to and put this number. But I don't really want to, right? I want to just write when it's a yes, simple as that. Problem is the dynamic content is not doing it. To further kind of explain what's going on here, in the Dataverse table, this one right here, our column, which we have, which is requires approval, is a complex column type. This is going to be a choice column. If you're in SharePoint list, you might be familiar with this. You have people, you have choices. So this is something that you can apply in all this logic quite often. What happens here with a choice column is, under the, in the back end, a Dataverse has effectively created a unique value that represents yes and a unique value that represents no. You know, we see what's called the label, yes and no, but actually what we receive, as we've seen in Power Automate, is this number. But we saw in the output, it says yes. So there's got to be a, week, a way we can take advantage of this, and we can. So when you know and you have this body value, this JSON array, and you see something that you want, there is actually a really nice, clean, built-in way so that you can acquire this. The trick is what you need to do is, in this case, I'm going to copy this body. So I'm literally going to control A, control C, this array, right? So this is an example of what I want back because what we're going to be doing, I'm going to go ahead and edit this. We're going to go ahead and add something in here. And this is going to be, as I start to type in JSON, we can see we have a data operation known as parse JSON. By going ahead and selecting this, it's basically saying what is going to be the content? What contains the actual array itself? Where's the JSON located? And as mentioned, we can go ahead and find our body, right? This is a pretty typical item that you'll find 
in any of your triggers and or actions. So our, you know, the content is tucked in this body. We saw it already. Now it's asking for a schema. This effectively describes the design, the architecture of this JSON array, kind of like giving out the name of the columns that would exist in there. And we saw it, right? We had the labels, the approval set, all that stuff, but they're pretty complex, right? Well, tr to write this out, it would take quite a bit and you'd have to be very knowledgeable on JSON and how that language is written. Beautiful part is you can see that it provides us an option here to generate from a sample. That's why I had us create this. This can be done tons of different ways, right? One of the best things you can always do is when building Power Automates, go ahead and run it before you finish it. Check out and see what, if you're getting those results. If not, what's coming out of that body? If you're identifying, that's what I want, but I'm not getting it. This is a great scenario. So I can go and hit generate sample. It literally asks us to put in the payload. So literally the JSON that came back from that last uh, request that last run, it's going to be able to break all this down as you're going to see here. So we can go ahead. It's going to break this down, right? It's going to generate this sample. And if I go and visit my dynamic content now, before I was grabbing the requires approval from my trigger, which was that when a row is added for a dataverse table. But now we have quite a few options available to us from the parse JSON action. Namely, we can see that there's quite a few things in here that we didn't see before. Specifically, if I start to type in requires, this is what we saw requires approval. That was the number, but the parse JSON actually lets us grab the label. So this time around, what we're going to see, because I'm using this dynamic content coming from the parse JSON, which was able to get more information than what I initially was getting from the dynamic content that Power Automate did automatically, this now should return a yes and it should say the expression result is true because I'm about to submit another record that is going to go ahead and uh, be true. So let me go ahead and save this, right? Wait till that's done. Once it's all set, we can go ahead over here. I'm going to go back to just kind of the overview page and I am going to go ahead on the other screen. I have it set in Excel that I just submitted a new record to that Dataverse table itself. So of course, we're just kind of waiting to see. Already kind of saw it, found it, triggered it. So if I go ahead and look now at these results, we know we've already kind of checked it out. Nothing's different here. We get the output, but the key matter is all this was done. All this was taken care of. What's the condition? And you can see it's evaluating to true because that label value that we've extracted from that body, that JSON array is what we wanted. And this is an easy way so you can deal with those complex column types and SharePoint inside of Dataverse. This is a nice, clean, easy way. So you don't have to, like I said, we could have just gone and into Dataverse and figure out, well, what are the numbers that for yes? And what's the number for no? And put it in there. Sure, that would have worked. But we want to be, I think, a little more transparent, a little more explicit. And now with this set, as new entries get put in, I can accurately monitor if it's going to require an approval or not. And I'll send it down that yes path if it's a yes so that we can go ahead and complete and do an approval process. So nice, clean, easy. You don't need to be a master or an expert at understanding JSON with the whole generate sample. The key here is just knowing and understanding how we can work and troubleshoot and power automate. I always go, I explore and look at those executions. I look at those outputs and you can see if the value you're looking for is present, is available, this is a nice, clean way so that you can extract exactly what you're looking for out of that body. So a nice quick video, hopefully helpful, and you can implement it in your flows today. I'll see you in the next one.